Hey guys, Christy here with Make Every Day Colorful and I wanted to tell you about my very not perfect first day of homeschool because I don't know if everybody tries to make homeschooling look perfect a lot of times or easy, but it's definitely not. So I've done preschool and pre-K before, which was pretty simple, mostly just coloring and um, maybe learning colors and shapes and all that stuff and reading a lot of books. We did a little bit of worksheets last year, you know, fun stuff. Um, so this year I'm like, okay, my oldest is in kindergarten. My other one follows right along with everything she does. So I'm going to do more uh, hands-on, like, letter sounds and all this stuff. We've practiced that before a little bit, and they're pr actually pretty good with all that. But this year, you know, I'm going to – gonna we're going to do it every single day, Um and we're going to do our worksheets and our math and our reading and handwriting and, you know, um, just just whatever, you know, normal stuff I guess you do for a kindergartner. Well, <laughs> I had a much resistance today. Let me tell you, like, I always try to go, I think I feel like I go all out to try and make it fun. Like, I bought really fun workbooks um, that I thought my kids would love. I got... Um, you know, a good curriculum that I love the stories in. Um, handwriting, I mean, I've tried different fun things like maybe do it in the sand or whatever. So, I, I mean, I kind of try to get stuff that I think would be fun and not just mundane and boring. But let me just tell you, I've had a lot of tears today. It almost makes me feel a little bit defeated, but I'm not going to be defeated because I know it was just the first day and we have to get into a routine and that is going to get better. We haven't had a really set routine um since we finished school in may most i say mostly due to covid um because well we've been home a lot where we would normally we're going out a lot of places we've been mostly you know when we do go out it's mostly to the park or a couple friends houses here and there so and then we had all our curriculum that i was waiting on that was on back order so normally i would have started earlier and i had plans for the summer to like you know uh in preparation for kindergarten i'm gonna do this this and this at least a couple of times a week with them so we don't get too out of the loop of um doing school or school routine well i kind of let it all go because i don't know i guess i was exhausted and i was trying to organize and i just needed like a break and you know i'm trying to read we built these big bookshelves so i don't know it's like a lot of organizing going and like i said we, we did like a lot of park days and stuff so you know, just to get out of the house. And things have just been out of whack for everybody. I know that. So I thought today would go a lot smoother than it did, but it did not. So I guess like first thing in the morning, you know, there's always some something at breakfast. Like maybe a little this and that. Or I didn't want this on my pancake or whatever. So that's like whatever. Well, I'm trying to think. The first thing I think we did, um, I did reading. I did read to them while they were eating. And... You know, they got distracted and wanted to walk off, which is fine. So I was like, okay, we'll finish some of the reading later. Um, but then when it came time to do workbooks, oh my goodness, such such fighting about that. Um, and I, like I said, I picked fun workbooks. I don't know why they didn't want to do them. Um, so the first one was our master books math. So I got them to do that. But then my two-year-old was pitching a fit because he doesn't have a workbook. Okay. I made each of my kids this binder with all our workbooks uh, pages printed out like uh, Rod and Staff. I did those workbook pages and some developing early learner and some um, handwriting without tears. So I got all those and I printed out everything and I gave each of the three kids a binder. Here's one of mine. <laughs> so all three kids got the same papers to kind of do at their own pace and... Um, then my, my two daughters got their master book math books, which those are about $28 a piece. So my two-year-old was crying because he doesn't have one. And as much as I'd love to just get him one, I hate to spend $28 on a math book that he's literally going to scribble all over. And then come time for kindergarten, you know, it may not even be usable because he's scribbled all over it, you know. Um... So I try, you know, so I try giving him his little binder with all his other worksheets, which I don't really expect him to do those either. But those are, I just ran off copies of each of those. So I could have cared a little bit less about those. No, he's pitching a fit because he wanted the binder they have. You know, I try like, hey, why don't I do this with you? Like, you know, your letters or something or your numbers or shapes. So like, no, he wanted to do what they're doing. So he's pitching a fit about that. Then 
the girls didn't really want to do their workbooks and it finally got to a point where I was getting frustrated and they were getting frustrated and I was like it dawned on me I'm like hello they need a break so I'm like okay let's go to the living room and pull out this big activity box I have this activity box I actually did a video on those that while I'm reading their history or read allows they can play in this activity box and while I read so I'm like, okay, we obviously all need a break from this because we're getting frustrated. So we had already did our phonics, which that was kind of a, you know, doing all of our alphabet. I, I think my oldest is kind of bored maybe because I think she knows most of her letter, you know, all of her letters really. So I guess she kind of was bored sitting through that. A, B, C, D, D E, F, J, G, G, K. <laughs> We're, we're close, okay? Anyway, so um, so once we get to that activity box, I'm like, okay, so that goes pretty smoothly. It's a nice little transition. So we step away. We did our math workbook, and I tried to do the other workbooks, but it just wasn't going to work. So we do the activity box. Well, I mean, I'm telling you, like, when my husband got home for lunch, there was stuff everywhere. He's, like, looking around because normally I'm pretty uh, tidy person, and I try to get everything done before noon when it comes to school and everything and he looks around and he's like oh my goodness what happened you know um because he could tell I was probably having a rough morning I'm like well I pulled this out now they don't want to do anything else so that was like pull I uh, say kind of like pulling teeth to get them to clean up because I mean they had stuff all over the place so a little bit of pulling teeth to get all that up even you know a little me trying to help them earlier they still you know so I finally had to be like okay Whoever doesn't clean up this box is going to have to take a nap today, which my two older ones never take naps. My two-year-old usually still does. So, of course, that's what got them to clean up. They're like, oh, no, I don't want to take a nap. So, finally, they cleaned up. We do our workbooks, and um, we finally get to do our workbooks. We finally do our calendar. We finally do our little letter of the week activity that I wanted to do. And then we finally get to watch Magic School Bus. Oh, that was the other meltdown. So, bright and early this morning after breakfast. My daughter has a meltdown because I found this um, free Magic School Bus curriculum, by the way, that I'm using. It's, it's, it's 180 days of Magic School Bus. Um, I'll try and link it below. So she's crying because she wants to watch Magic School Bus. So day one, we're supposed to watch Lost in Space. So we had that meltdown this morning because we didn't want to watch Magic School Bus at, you know, 7 o'clock in the morning because I wanted to get all of our workbooks done all of our other school stuff done because I felt like if I turned on the TV or started letting them do ABC Mouse or whatever, I was going to lose them. That was it. Like, they're not going to want to do anything else or they're going to be like, you know, I want to watch this or that. So, one was crying because of ABC Mouse. She wanted to do ABC Mouse. And one was crying because she wanted to watch Magic School Bus. So, I had to deal with that this morning. And the other thing was handwriting. So, I'm, it's like I try not to be too pushy because I feel like, you know, they are just like, you know, they're... They're five and under, so I try not to be too pushy with the handwriting, but I do want them to try and write a little bit because they're always at, like, they'll ask me, like, how do you spell this or how do you do that? So it's kind of like I try to get them to do a little bit of handwriting, but like I said, maybe maybe I just need to wait another week or so, I mean, another year or so to really do it. So that was like pulling teeth too. So let me just tell you, the reason I made this video is I want to encourage you moms that if you think that you know homeschooling is all rainbows and butterflies and other moms do it better than you and your kids don't want to do this and how do you get your kids to do that i don't think it's great you know for everybody or most people most people are going to have bad days so this was day one for me and as you can see i'm like a hot mess now it was um it was kind of a rough day to be honest it was hard to get i feel like it's going to take us a while to get into this routine i feel like you know i'm gonna have some resistance i feel like i'm probably gonna have to change certain things like maybe I'm expecting too much for a kindergartner and I just need to wait another year or so because I know um you know there's a lot of places that don't even really believe in doing school to their six but I'm not going to get into all that so um you know just just let you know it's not perfect it's not great for everybody I can put all the most beautiful pictures I want on Facebook and social media and YouTube about my great awesome homeschool setup or what I'm doing and I make it look all magical but it's not all magical and I feel like already you know this is just day one and we're already gonna have a little bit of a um a curve to get over to get everybody in their routine of doing this every day and not fighting about it and just trying to enjoy you know um I say more time together because even though we've been home a lot with the COVID going on, we've also gone to a lot of parks and 
hung out with friends. We've we've given up a lot of things that we used to do, like the children's museum and different outings like that. But we're really gonna have to work on a routine. And we've been kind of just taking it easy. Every day we wake up and we eat and do our Bible and pray. And then we have the whole rest of the day to do whatever we wanted, you know. So there was no, okay, we have to do this and now we have to do this and now we have to do this. So it's a learning curve. But I think um, I always know with persistence, it will work out. So I'm gonna be persistent. I'm not gonna let today discourage me. I'm just gonna push forward. And I know it may take a couple weeks. What is it, what, 21 days to form a habit, they say? Um, so I'm just gonna keep pushing forward and I'll try and give y'all maybe an update in a couple weeks how it's going then. But you know what, mamas? I know a lot of y'all are new to homeschooling this year and I hope this encourages you. And I hope you don't feel defeated if your first day didn't go like you planned and envisioned into your mind. Because it doesn't always go like that. Not even for people that have been doing it for a couple of years or many years. They all have bad days. Well, guys, thanks for watching. I hope this encouraged you. If you want to see any other homeschooling videos or other things I do, just check out my channel. Subscribe, follow me on social media. Thank you, guys. Have a blessed day.